So you've gone and bought some nice metal dice and you don't want to chip the dice or the table when you're showing them off to your friends or opponents. Hey gang, what's up? It's Sizzent here and luckily you're watching the preamble to me showing you how to make a rather spiffy valet tray out of leather. The easy mode of doing this would be to simply buy leather in a rectangle from your preferred retailer, but because I've got half a hide under the desk, I'll be cutting out an A4 size of veg tan. Now, this can be any size you want, but this feels like a good bit of real estate for my rolls. It's convenient to just use a piece of paper and it will confuse and infuriate people who use Imperial. This project requires no stitching whatsoever, and most of the steps here will be optional decorative steps. The only thing that we really need for a purely functional functional dice tray is a rectangle of veg tan leather, some water and some press studs, but we don't want purely functional, so let's indulge our inner artisan for a bit. Once you've got your rectangle cut out, you'll want to case it with a little bit of water. I'm gonna try and do this voiceover, God knows if you'll be able to hear it properly over the construction noise. But one of the things that I actually really like about casing leather like this is that once you get that little bit of moisture into it it becomes a lot more clear and visible all of the little patterns and all of the little imperfections in it that really tell the story and, and show that this is a, a real object that this is a skin that was lived in you know there are these beautiful lines passing through here there are some rough spots sort of dotted throughout. This isn't a perfect piece of material that's come off of a print somewhere. This tells the story of it, you know? And when you're, you know, rolling dice on it or throwing keys into it, it's gonna wind up with a ton of little dents and scratches in it anyway, so it's good if the thing, you know, starts off as it means to carry on. Once the rectangle's cut out, I'm gonna put a little bit of a radius on my corners. Now there are tools to do this, but you can also do it by hand like I'm doing here. The trick is not to attempt to cut a curve, but to cut many, many little straight lines along the curve. And of course you can do this with whatever knife strikes your fancy. I'm using a crescent knife, but don't let that stop you from trying it with a Stanley or an X-Acto or whatever it is that you use to cut leather with. Now to enable the leather to fold along the edges that I want, I'm gonna be using a swivel knife here to score a line about two thirds of the way through the leather. This is a specialty tool. You can very easily just use an awl or a different knife or, you know, use a V gaucher if you want to use the specialty tool that's actually meant for this and show me up. I'm gonna mark along the cut with a leather tooling iron, but as mentioned earlier, this is just my aesthetic preference. I'm using a flat bevel here because I think it's gonna make it fold a little bit easier. And once I'm done with that, of course, I will stamp the scissor mark right in the middle of it because it feels good to be noticed sometimes, you know? Now, do you want a flat, unmarked tray to better show off the grain of your leather? Good idea, you can leave it. Do you want an elaborate floral carving to show off your sweet tooling skills? Good idea. You can go absolutely as hard as you want. Me, I'm gonna put a repeating pattern over my tray using a tool called a basket weave tool. Leather tools are not very inventively named. I think that this looks spectacular, the way that it goes around my little stamp in the middle to show off how cool I am. And also the little stamp in the middle is gonna prevent anyone from slipping this into their own bag once we're done playing. If you're using tooling irons like I am, you'll want to make sure that your leather's a little bit damp, but not completely soaked with water. A good litmus test is to wet it with a cloth, let it soak for five minutes, and then hold the leather up to your cheek. If it's pleasantly cool, then it's got a good water content to take a mark from a tool. I do have videos where I go more in depth into the individual steps that I'm doing here, and I will leave that playlist below if you want to look at some tutorial content. Now, antiquing leather is basically the same process Process as putting a wash on minis, if you're familiar with that. We apply a coat of this specialty dye and with the sponge, I'm really just getting it into all of the crevices as hard as I can and then going over the top with this paper towel just to try and wipe the excess off the top but leave most of the dye down in those cracks where it's really gonna contrast for us. Because of the nature of this piece, the edges fold up and so I'm gonna wanna put a little bit of dye on the back 
I'm not using the same antiquing dye. I am using number three, medium brown from Phoebings. Shout out to my Simpsons fans who got that reference. I think it's a pretty close match and, you know, even though the sides do fold up, you're not really gonna notice it all that much. I'll now be quiet and let you guys listen to the edge beveling. Oh my god, that sounds good. What I'm doing here is putting a little bit of dye onto the edge because this is my preference. I really like the way that leather looks when it's quite light on the front and has a really dark brown to black dye around the edge. If you don't like that look, don't feel like you need to do it. Another look I like with my edges is a shiny edge. So I'm just using some beeswax and a burnishing stick here to really work up the shine on the edges. And then it is time, my friends, for the Neats Foot Oil. I use Neats Foot Oil to seal almost every leather item that I make, but like most steps on this tutorial, it is just my preference. There are some people who don't like it, but God, just look at the way that that goes on. It's beautiful. Bear in mind, if you are using it on your own leather projects, that it will darken the leather by a about a shade or two, but it's just so supple and beautiful. Once the piece is sealed, I'm gonna roughly measure where the holes and the corners need to be by pinching them and folding them up. And I am going to use this awl in order to pierce through so that I can see where the press studs need to go. Side note, this scratch awl is one of my favorite tools. It is the awl that I keep coming back to. I love the way that it works. And it is a piece that I got in a really cheap, crummy eBay starter set. So if you're wondering what leather tools to buy, that one. Now, here's the trick. The leather won't want to stay in that shape and the studs will burst open. All you have to do is wet the leather quite thoroughly and clamp it in the shape that you want. I've used these little clamps from Bunnings, but I mean, anything will work, even a clothes peg. And there you have it, a leather project that didn't require a single bit of stitching and really adds a bit of rustic flair to the next time you're dungeon diving or attempting to intimidate your opponent across the table. Well, gang, I really hope that you enjoyed watching this one just as much as I enjoyed making it. You take it easy and I will catch you next time. Oh, also, please like and subscribe and comment down below. I need the engagement. I've forgotten how to do this.